Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so full and free. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so full and free. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so full and free. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so full and free. Well, God bless you. Good morning and praise the Lord, Sister Polk and Deacon Polk. God bless you, Elder and Sister Dorset. Good morning. God bless you, Sister Newby. God bless you, Sister Eleanor. God bless you, Sister Jackson. God bless you, Dr. Harrison. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Mika. Praise the Lord and good morning. God bless you, Sister Mamie. God bless you, Sister Margot. Praise the Lord. Sister Thompson, God bless you, Lydia. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Bailey. Thank God for you, my friend. Good morning, Missionary Johnson. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you, Elder and Sister Bailey. Good morning, Deacon Briggs. God bless you. Good morning, Pastor and Lady Chetram. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Petaway. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Cheat. Good morning, Mother McCall. God bless you, Bishop Desenic Alde and Lady Alde. God bless you, Angela, my dear sister. Good morning, Rosalind. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Jennifer. God bless you. Good morning, Monique. God bless you. Good morning, Elder Adams. God bless you. Praise the Lord and good morning. Sister Pedlar, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Williams. God bless you. Good morning, Deacon Briggs. God bless you, sir. Good morning, Sister Cheat. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you, Duchess. Good morning, Sister Judy. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you, Brother Perry and family. Good morning, Sister Walker. Good morning, Mother Taylor. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Wiggins and Brother Wiggins. God bless you both. Good morning, Sister Duchess. God bless you, Brother Aaron and the family. Good morning, Brother Wardlaw. God bless you and Sister Wardlaw. Good morning, Sister Speller. Good morning. God bless you, Sister Graves and Deacon Graves. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Diane Brody. God bless you and your family. Good morning, Brandy. God bless you. Good morning, Pastor Hargrove. God bless you and Lady Hargrove. Good morning, Sister McLeod. Good morning, Sister Malloy. Good morning, Sister Roberts. God bless you. Good morning, Missionary Bryant. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you, Sister um, McCarroll Johnson. Thank God for you. Good morning, Sister Dawes. God bless you. And Minister Dawes, Lady Joseph, God bless you. And Pastor Joseph, well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to bring to you a biblical meditation and prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to witness the blessings of God and the favor of God that is flowing through prayer. Prayer making a difference. We're having an amazing 104th Holy Convocation here in Orlando, Florida. We thank God for traveling mercies. We thank God for the fellowship of the saints and for everybody that is coming and here and those that are still arriving in in um, Orlando. God is blessing. And I believe we're getting ready for the opening of the Way of the Cross International Convocation. They're meeting and we thank God for them and we're praying for Bishop 
Dillard and Bishop Brooks and all of the saints of God that are a part of Way Across that God would bless them with traveling mercies and also bless their convocation in the name of Jesus Christ. Convocations are special times because they is when the churches come together in fellowship. They come together in prayer. They come together to do the business of the church, but they come together, I believe, so that the presence of God can saturate the people of God. So that as people leave the convocation, they go home encouraged souls are being saved here thank god for the move of god that is happening with the young people praise our god hallelujah lady davis was helping in the um children's church service last night and a number of young people received the holy ghost and it's just exciting to witness what the lord is doing because he is blessing somebody and i sincerely believe somebody's going to leave with a miracle. Somebody's going to leave with a life-changing experience as a result of these convocations, the coming together of the people of God. As always, if you have a prayer request, we want you to share it with us. If you're on Facebook, please just place it into the chat, or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram, you can place it right there in the chat, or you can direct message Pastor RJD, Pastor RJD. And to everybody that's on the conference call, everybody who's on YouTube, or anybody that can text in your prayer request to 336 567 5358. The number is 336 567 5358. Text those prayer requests in. We are adding them to the prayer list. We're praying over them and we are believing God with you that God is going to do something amazing in your life. Let's go to the word of God this morning. And once again, if you would turn to, and we're in Psalm 43. Psalm 43, book of Psalms, Psalm number 43, and we are reading the entire 43rd Psalm. The Bible says, judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man, for art for thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and thy tabernacles. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O oh, God my God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Hallelujah. And my God. I want to talk with you this morning from the subject Lord, send the light. Lord, send the light the light um it 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 seems like um a repetition between psalm 42 that we talked about and psalm 43 in fact some theologians believe that psalms 42 and 43 were actually written as one song they were written as one song the the editors of the scripture um decided to separate them into two psalms but they were written as one. So if you think about what we read and talked about in Psalm number 42, it seems that it flows into Psalm 43 and they were actually one song, just one song. And so in that event, um, it, it carries this same um, theme of David lamenting, David crying, David um, calling on God. David engaged in an invocation of prayer because it seems to indicate that his problems have not ended, at least not fully or finally. But yet we see the spiritual progress in the mind of David. You know, you know, problems don't often change immediately. And I know we would love to have things just go away. 
I know we would love to have situations just disappear. And but they don't always do that. And so we have to fortify our hearts and our minds and we have to regulate our spirits to the mindset that, as Job said, all the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change comes. I'm waiting for God to change some things. I'm waiting on God to fix some things. I'm waiting on God to do some things. And, and, and one of the things we have to guard ourselves against is the weariness of the mind. Because in all honesty, you get tired. You get tired of the same scenarios. You get tired of the same experiences. You get tired of going through those problems and, and the problems don't seem to go away. And you pray and you fast and you trust God and you get in the prayer line and people lay hands and pray for you. And, and, and then you go right back to that situation. And it seems as if, hallelujah, it's not going anywhere. And, you know, one of the things that the enemy does is he likes to play the waiting game. Yeah, he likes to play the waiting game. You know, Satan and the demons of hell have been tripping up people for centuries. And so what they do is they're hoping, they're really believing, and they're really working on the premise that they can put something on the saints. And if they let it stay there and let it linger, that the saints will just give up, that the saints don't have the tenacity or the wherewithal or the strength to stand up in the midst of trials. And that's why your Bible says that we have to learn how to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You have to learn, you know, one of the things, I, I've never been in the military, but one of the things the military does in basic training is they build endurance in the recruits. They build endurance. They have them running. They have them doing calisthenics. They have them doing all kinds of exercises, and the purpose is to build endurance. Athletes, when they first, one of the first things that a coach does with an athletic team is you make them run. You make them run, you make them work out, you make them do any number of things, once again, because the premise is to build endurance because what you don't want is the soldier on the battlefield giving up. You don't want the athlete on the athletic field to give up. I watched my um, spiritual son, Xavier. Hallelujah. He's an athlete and a gifted athlete and he shows all of these videos and he's running against barriers and he's doing push-ups and he's doing um, all kinds of cardio exercises to build his endurance so that when he gets in the actual game, the weariness will not cause him to give up. And so God is dealing with us. Ah, I'm talking to somebody. God is dealing with us that he's strengthening you so that the weariness doesn't cause you to give up. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So David is still dealing with the struggles, the trials, the traumas that he's been recounting in Psalm 42. And so he opens this, this Psalm 43, this sequel, as it were, to the Psalm saying, judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. In other words, Lord, vindicate me. Lord, vindicate me. Lord, argue my case. You know, one of the uh, descriptions of God is that he is indeed, hallelujah, a counselor. He is indeed an advocate. The, 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 one of the things that describes the Holy Spirit in the scripture is another comforter, one who comes alongside to help. He comes to help us. And so David is pleading with God, Lord, help me in so many words. Lord, help me, help me deal with this. Judge me, vindicate me and plead my cause. Because, you know, sometimes you can be doing the right thing and the person is doing the wrong thing and they try to flip it so they you're the one that's wrong. I, I don't know. I know that's happened to somebody besides me, that you're doing what is right. You're doing what you're supposed to do. You're living according to the scripture, but somebody you're connected with is trying to judge you falsely. They're trying to judge you. They're trying to, in some way, intimidate you and spin it as if there is something wrong with you. And so David says, Lord, judge me. Hallelujah. And in the latter part of the B clause of verse one, oh, deliver me from the 
deceitful and the unjust man. I wish I could tell you that everybody you deal with is going to deal with you fairly and honestly and in integrity, but it doesn't happen. Holiday, you get cheated by people. Sometimes they share your same last name. You get cheated by people. Sometimes they're in your family. You get cheated by people that you work with every day. You get cheated by people even that you worship with because everybody in the church is not saved. Oh God, let me say that one more time. Everybody in the church is not saved. There are others, my God, that are simply planted by the enemy to overthrow the passion and the concern rather of the saints. But look at verse two, David, David understands this. And in your mind, you have to encourage want yourself. You have to encourage yourself in what you know about God. He says, for thou art the God of my strength. Hallelujah. He makes that declaration. You are the God of my strength. I have no strength outside of you. I have no power, no ability outside of you. You are my strength. And so he, he says this in the musing of his mind, why dost thou cast me off? In other words, I feel like I'm alone. Now, feeling like you're alone and being alone are two different things. You can be so consumed, you can be so consumed with whatever you're dealing with, whatever the trial, the tribulation, the scenario is, you can be so consumed with what you're dealing with that you start to believe that God is not with you. That's just your, your emotions talking to you. That's just your negativity in the moment speaking to you. That's why he says, why go our mourning? Because of the oppression of the enemy. I feel feel like I'm alone. I feel like I'm fighting this by myself, but I need to say to you that you are not alone. That's why David pleads, oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Oh God, I feel abandoned. I feel attacked. I feel like people are falsely judging me and falsely accusing me. So Lord, send out thy light. What does light do? Light illuminates the situation. Light exposes exposes errors. Light sterilizes. Sunlight sterilizes. That's why you bring people into the sunlight, because the power of the sun even sterilizes infections and things that are wrong. And so, Lord, send your light, your holy, godly light. Send your light and thy truth, and let them do what? Lead me. Oh, God, I don't want to be led by my own mind. I don't want to be led by my own hallelujah, emotions. I don't want to be led by the feelings of the moment, but I need you to lead me. And where do I want to go, Lord? Lead, let them bring me unto thy holy hill. Now, hills and mountains in biblical times were places of worship. You would gather at the mountain. You would build the altar on the mountain. You would build the altar on the hilltop because there was something significant about being in the high place and that high place brought you somehow closer to God. So I want the light to lead me closer to God in the midst of everything that you are dealing with, in the midst of every trial, every trauma, every difficulty. You need to get closer to God. Don't allow the affliction the trouble, the test, the trial to be a wedge between you and God, but press your way closer to God. Let God bring you closer to him because if you get in the presence of God, you're going to feel better. Ah, yes, Shatama. I'm going to say it. If you just get in the presence of God, you're going to feel better. Just being where God is, just being where he dwells. So I'm lead me, hallelujah, to the altar. Bring me to the holy hill bring me to thy tabernacles. Oh God, I, I, I got a lot to share, but you know, the tabernacle, hallelujah, was a mobile sanctuary. Let me say that again. It was not a permanent structure. It was a tent and the tent where, went wherever Israel went and wherever they pitched their tent, the glory of God would be in the tabernacle. What am I saying? I'm saying that God is with you 
everywhere that you are. Oh God, you are not in a place where God can't follow you, when God can't meet you, because God goes where we are, and we go where God is. Hallelujah. So if God is moving, I'm moving. If God is staying, I'm staying. If God is standing, I'm standing, because I want to be where God is. My good friend, Bishop Alias G said something that I have never forgotten. He says, we need to be where God is, not where he was. Let me say that again. We need to be where God is, not where he was. So if God is moving, you need to move. If God is standing, you need to stand. If God is moving to the next place, the next dimension, the next level of glory, don't be stagnant, but be where God is. Be where God is. And he says, then will I go to the altar of God. Unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee. So when I come into the presence of God, I don't come, I might have a struggle. I might have a problem. I might have an affliction. But when I come into the presence of God, I come with my praise. I come with my worship. I don't come in God's presence and saying nothing. I don't come in God's presence rolling my eyes and folding my arms and acting like hallelujah life is just so terrible if life is bad god is good let oh god let me say that again if your life is bad god is still good so when i come into god's presence i come into god's presence worshiping, praising, glorifying God. David has so many struggles that he describes, that he laments, that he shares. But in the midst of everything David is going through, David is worshiping and honoring God. And again, he asks himself this question, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Why are you allowing what you're going through to determine your attitude? and your behavior and your emotions of the moment? Why are you letting your feelings manipulate your day? Hope in God. Hallelujah. Hope in God. Hope in God. Trust in God. Lean on God. Depend on God, for I shall yet, yet praise him who is the health of my countenance. My health is coming from God. My strength is coming from God. My, my favor is coming from God. The blessings of the Lord are coming from his hand, and so I'm not going to let my emotions manipulate my attitude. Everybody feels down. Yes, Lord. Everybody has moments of indecision. Everybody has days where you just wonder, is the Lord really there? Is he helping me? We all have that. But you've got to arrest those emotions and put them under the blood. You've got to arrest those feelings and put them in the mindset God, I'm trusting you. My hope is in you. My confidence is in you. My faith is in you. This situation will pass. You will deliver. You will sanctify. You will make a way. And I'm trusting. I'm trusting God. Hope in God because he is the health of my countenance. He gives the light in my life. He gives the favor in my existence. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for the word of God. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My gracious God, I love you. I thank you for your goodness for your mercy, for your love, your kindness, for your continued favor upon your sons and daughters. Lord, I thank you, my God, for last night's rest. And I thank you for awakening us this morning. And Lord, we're in our right minds. We have the ability to get up and we had the ability to get together and organize and prepare ourselves, Lord, to join this great cadre of believers from all over the world. Jesus, you've brought us together. My God, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, you've brought us together from all over the world in this prayer room. And Lord, I'm asking you now to flood the prayer room with your presence. Let everybody on the line, whether they're coming by conference, 
conference call or Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, however they join this prayer, I want you to bless them, God. I want them to know that they are in your presence and we have approached the altar of God. We have approached the blessing place of God. We have approached the meeting place where God meets, oh God, his children. Lord, I want you to touch us now and release miracles, release signs and wonders, release deliverance. Lord, some of us are weary because we're dealing with some negative situations. Some of us are struggling today. Oh my God, with family, with friends, with relationships. Some of us are struggling, my God, with all manners of affliction. But Lord, there is nothing. Oh God, too hard for you. And we trust you and we believe you and we acknowledge, my God, what you're able to do. God, I'm praying today that you would remember, Lord, leadership, le leadership, Lord, the leadership of our church. Remember, oh God, our presiding apostle, oh God, James May. Remember our vice presider, Bradford Berry. Remember, my God, Lady May and Lady Berry. Remember the entire board of apostles, the entire board of bishops, the entire board of presbyters. Remember the leaders, my God, and the members of the women's auxiliaries. Remember the deacons today. Remember, my God, the young people. Remember the Sunday school, God. Remember social justice, education, evangelism, home mission, global mission, everybody that's working in the kingdom. I'm praying for them now. I'm praying for their strength. I'm praying for their insight. I'm praying for their wisdom. Lord, not only at the international level, but those that work in states and dioceses and regions, those that work in local churches, God. Lord God, from the humblest servant, Lord God, to the loftiest leader, I want your anointing to move upon your people, to strengthen them, to edify them, to encourage their hearts. Lord, I know the enemy is attacking leaders, my God, with criticism, attacking leaders, my God, with sickness, attacking leaders with financial difficulties. But God, we're trusting you because you're caring for us, God. Strengthen leadership today. Remember Sheila Howard and family. Remember Linda's children and grandchildren. Remember Scott Morgan today, God. God. Remember James Samuels. God, remember them in the name of Jesus. Remember James Polk today. My God, remember Irvin. God, I'm praying for the seniors this morning, especially those, oh God, that live alone. God, cover them, protect them. Lord, be with them, God. Those that are caring for themselves, God, give them grace today. I'm praying, my God, for Mother Street's family. God, that you would step in, that you would undertake, that you would deliver, that you would save and strengthen. Strength God. I'm praying for Eureka Harrison. God, I'm praying for Lita. I'm praying for Sylvia's family. I'm praying for Linda's family. God, I'm lifting up in the name of Jesus, Pastor and Lady Jenkins and Shiloh Church. I'm praying today, my God, for Dr. Brown and Shiloh in Plainfield. I'm praying today for Greater Refuge Temple. I'm praying for Bishop Charles Wright, Mother Faye Wright, and I'm praying for Bishop William Wilkins, Sister Sarah Wilkins. God, I'm praying for Refuge Temple in Burlington, God. I'm praying, my God, for Lady Davis. I'm praying for my strength today. I'm praying for the strength of my family and the strength of the spiritual children of Refuge Temple. Lord, so many going through so many different things, but God, you're a deliverer. God, you're a way maker. God, you're able to bring us out. Lord, all over the body of Christ, there are struggles and challenges and difficulties, but God, our hope is in you and we trust you. God, save. Save to the utmost. God, save. Let them hear the word. Let them believe and let them be born of the water and of the spirit. Lord, look on the backslider, that soul that is drifted, that soul that is turned away, that soul that has become discouraged and given up. And God, minister to them now in the name of Jesus. Minister to them. Lord, remember Jennifer today. Remember, my God, everybody on this line. God, in do something to strengthen and lift and bolster the spirits of your children. God, I'm praying for the sick today, those under affliction. I'm praying that you would remember them. Remember, my God, Destiny Rao. Remember Harmon. Remember, my God, Linda Fountaine. Remember Mother Patterson. Remember Missionary Gail Hardy. Remember Deacon Arnold Riley. Lord Dawn. Remember Earl Gardner today. Remember, my God, Miracle Destiny. Remember Mother Dillard this morning. Remember Kathy. 
Kathleen Murphy Jackson. Remember, in the name of Jesus, everybody suffering sickness. I pray for Mother DuBose today. I pray for your healing virtue. Oh, God, to overshadow her. God, continue that process. God, I'm praying today, God, in the name of Jesus, for Brother Phil Solomon. God, strengthen his body. I'm praying, God, that you would remember, my God, Minister Perkins, Daniel, that you remember Deacon Adams. Remember Deacon Wilson today. Remember, my God, Deacon and Sister Harrison. Lord, stretch out your healing hand upon them. Remember Elder Toll. Remember, my God, in the name of Jesus, Elder Dokes, and God, strengthen them in your precious name. Edify them, lift them, move them, help them. Oh, my God. Lord, encourage their hearts. I'm praying, my God, for Missionary Brisbane, Missionary Roseman, Missionary Domingo, Missionary Hodges today. I'm praying, God, that you remember, my God, Sister McLean. Remember, my God, Mother Wilson, my God, and Carl. Remember, my God, Deacon Grant today. Lord, with your healing touch. Lord, I'm praying today for Pastor and Lady Winston. I'm praying today for, El oh God, for Mother Hicks and Mother Owens. I'm praying today for Bishop D. God, I'm praying for Apostle Keith. Lord, let your healing virtue continue to flow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God, I'm lifting up my God sick everywhere. Remember Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Bishop Early Dillard. Remember Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady, oh God, oh God, Andrea Maxwell, Sister Shakaya Polk, Mother Carol Coleman today. Remember, my God, Bishop Alvin Palmer, Bishop Clonell Williams, Bishop Irving Taylor. Remember Bishop Gregory Wilder, Bishop Henry Hargrove. God, I'm praying today that you would look on and remember, my God, Apostle, hallelujah, Herbert Evers, Apostle Leroy Joseph, Apostle Charles Williams, Apostle Sylvester Norwood. God, send your healing touch, Lord, upon Brother Wiggins. Oh, God, Brother and Mother Sherrod, Mother Garland today, Dr. Haywood, Sister Haywood. With Dr. Hayward's mother. I'm praying today for Mother Jill, for Mother Pride. God, I'm lifting up Mother Chambers, God, in the name of Jesus. Mother Moorhead, Mother Carter. God, I'm praying for Lady Staten. Lord, remember in the name of Jesus, Pastor Carr, Minister Carr. Lord, I'm lifting up, God. I'm lifting up, God, that you remember in the name of Jesus. Elder Tyson and Elder Smith, Lord, I'm praying today for Mother Foster, for Henry J, for Brother Cliff. God, let your healing virtue flow. Look on, Mother, hallelujah, Tanaj, Mother Home and God, Missionary Simmons today, Cynthia, Catherine, Duchess, Lord, I'm praying for Marlette, God, I'm praying for Maurice, I'm praying grace and strength and healing, my God, for Dennis, for Tony, for Kimberly, God, for hallelujah, Chris, everybody that's watching, if there's any sickness, God, heal, oh, Shandana Masata, heal from emotional distress, heal from emotional depression and brokenness, in the name of Jesus, he shandana Lord, I want healing to come upon your people today in every hospital, nursing home, rehab center, wherever people are, God, send the healing that only you can provide. Lord, I'm praying today for grieving people everywhere. Remember, Lord God, the Neil and the Sermon family. Remember the Revis Pendergrass family. Remember the Regas family. Remember Lacey, my God, in the loss of her father. God, I'm praying today for Mother Walker and Mother Moya. I'm praying for, hallelujah, Jalisa and family. I'm praying for Jackie and family, for Takesha and family, for Jerry and the family. God, I'm praying today for the Lunsford family. God, I continue to lift up my God, Lady Maxwell, Charles and Cedric and the family. God, remember in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Dr. Carter and the family. Remember, hallelujah, in your precious name. God, Bishop Fields, Shekinah and the family. God, I'm praying today for the grieving hearts everywhere. Remember Mother Harrell and the family. Remember my God, in the name of Jesus, look on, hallelujah, and strengthen, oh God, these grieving people everywhere. I'm praying today that you would remember, hallelujah. Mother Grant and the family. God, look on the groove of family. Look on, my God, the Kramer family. Look on the Hargrove, the Blunt family. God, strengthen them now. Look on, my God, hallelujah, the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family. We pray for the Meadows family, the Moyer family, the Perkins family. God, look on the Dockery family, Sister Pam, her mother, and her sisters. God, look on, oh God, grieving people everywhere. The White family. God, we pray for Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. Margie 
and the McLean, Melvin, and Street families. We pray, my God, that you remember the Ransom family, the Jackson family, the Ned family, the Newkirk family, the Nunn family, the Umstead family. God, remember the Green family. God, in the name of Jesus, remember Brenda and the Alan McNeely family, Sean and Monique and the Gary Porter family. We pray, my God, hallelujah, for Trell and Ryan and the Alan Williams family. God, we're praying, God, that you remember grieving hearts everywhere. Tommy and Michelle, oh God, and the Clark family. God, remember the Smith family, the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdies, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family. God, remember them in the name of Jesus. We pray, my God, for the Middletons, the Winninghams, oh God, the Taylors. We pray for the Felix family, the Sapata family, the Mannix, the Boodrums, the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Matherins. God, remember them. Oh God, remember, my God, Pastor Stevens. Remember Pastor and Lady Mannix. Remember the Davises. God, remember the Allens, the Caldwells, the Hayes, the Moors, the Austins, the Harbisons, the Adams and the Austin family. God, every grieving widow, every grieving widower, every grieving child, parent, sibling, loved one, God, we're praying for them now in the name of Jesus. Give the comfort that you can provide. Remember the people. Oh God, in the body of Christ everywhere, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, all the pastor's children, mothers and missionaries, ministers and deacons, the young people. God, we're praying for the young people. My God, remember them in a special way. Remember, Lord, everybody. In the body of Christ today, I'm praying, oh God, for grace and strength to be upon the people today. I'm praying for musicians, singers, and songs. God, strengthen the church. Lift the church, God. Bring the church to the altar. My God, so that you can comfort us and strengthen us and edify us, God. Remember first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. God, we're praying today for school employees and students everywhere. We're praying for everybody that works. We're praying for everybody that needs a job. God, look on us now. Strengthen us. Help us. Oh, in the name of Jesus, God, give us grace to touch and deliver in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I'm praying today for healing even on the job. I'm praying for healing and deliverance. And Lord, heal this land. This land is so troubled. This land is in the midst of turmoil. But you are the bomb in Gilead. So heal the land from sin, from hatred, from jealousy, from violence. Heal the land, my God, from injustice. Heal the land from racism and sexism. And let your church be the light of the world. And the salt of the earth. God bless us today. Oh God, in our going out and our coming in, keep us safe under your precious blood. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on, join me in giving God praise right now. Everybody, everybody on this line, take a moment whether you're on the conference call or YouTube or wherever you're joining us, God, take this moment to give God praise right now. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Give God praise. This is my declaration for today. I am going to the altar. I am going to the altar, saints. I'm going to the place of healing, of reconciliation, of strength, of worship, of sacrifice. I am going, my God, to the altar. I'm not going to hide from the altar. That's my place. Hallelujah. Stay at the altar. I know some people think the altar is just for the sinners. No, the altar is for the saints. Hallelujah. The Bible says, come boldly to where the throne of grace, the altar, where you can find strength, mercy, and grace to help in what? The time of need. Hallelujah. You want strength? Stay at the altar. Don't let anybody take you away from the altar. Stay at the altar. That's the place of strength, of prayer, of deliverance. Stay at the altar, saints. Stay at the altar. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I'm trusting that this 
biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your Friday is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram. Thank God for those who join us by conference call. We love you and appreciate you. And we also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of this available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our radio broadcast airs every morning at 8 30 a.m. on gregorygospel.com. Look, I want to thank everybody, everybody that seeds and souls and shares with this ministry. Hallelujah. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do, and we appreciate them. And if you want to mail a gift, you can send it to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can give electronically. Our website is www.refuge.com. Refuge Temple, N as in North, C as in Carolina.com, Refuge Temple, NC.com, and you can give on the donate page. If you have the GiveLify app, simply type in Refuge Temple Burlington. You'll see a picture of the church and you can make your gift there. Hallelujah on GiveLify. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign the number one refuge. Dollar sign one refuge is our Cash App. And once again, you'll see a picture of the church to make your gift there. And we thank you for your giving, but we thank you most of all for being a part of this morning prayer family. Lady Davis and I have been so encouraged as we've just fellowshiped throughout the convocation and meeting face to face the people who join us daily in prayer and hearing the testimonies, oh my God, the testimonies of encouragement, the testimonies of blessings and miracles and healings that have come from the people who join us each day in prayer. So this prayer is, and once again, I tell people all the time. This is not a Pastor Davis thing. This is a God thing. God has brought us together in prayer and we're praying daily. Hallelujah. Daily. Over 1,000 days of prayer. We have been engaged in praying and God has been blessing and touching people all over the world. So please keep coming and keep praying. And as you pray, pray for me, pray for Lady Davis, pray for our children, pray for my father, pray for my sisters, my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Lift up Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless us and let's pray one for another that the grace and favor of God, hallelujah, might keep us and sustain us. The Lord keep you at his altar so that his blessings can flow in your life. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom. Shalom.